is Steve Johannesson, and welcome to the K2000 training video. This video is designed to get you started with the K2000 quickly. We're going to show you the basic operation and setup of the instrument. The K2000 represents the most powerful synthesizer technology ever created. This video manual is evidence of Kurzweil's commitment to you. It is intended as a supplement to your printed owner's manual. We recommend that you refer to the printed manual for more detailed information. Before we begin our presentation of the K2000, it will be necessary for you to load the file video into your instrument. To do this, remove the 3.5 inch disc from the plastic packet which contains the printed owner's manual. Make sure the disc has a plastic tab in the down position with the window open to prevent accidentally erasing the disc. Place the disc face up in the floppy drive on the left of the instrument. Press the button on the front panel marked disc. Press the soft button under the word load. The K2000 will automatically check to see if the floppy is a 740K 1.44 megabyte or a Kai disk before showing you the directory. Locate the alpha wheel found on the right of the control panel and rotate it to the right until you see video highlighted on the dark blue bar. Press the soft button under OK. Next, rotate the alpha wheel to the right until you see 900 through 999 highlighted in the dark blue bar and press the button under OK. Now you're ready to learn about your K2000. Now press the program button to return to program mode. Let's define some general terms. The K2000 stores all user programmable information as objects. There are many different types of objects including programs, setups, quick access banks, effects, songs, and others. A program includes all the parameters that make up a voice or patch. A setup is a preset arrangement of up to three programs mapped across the keyboard, sometimes referred to as a performance or combination by other manufacturers. A quick access bank contains ten programs or setups in any combination. An effect program is a snapshot of the multi-effect settings. A song is a standard MIDI sequence file that can be loaded into the user RAM memory of the K2000. Let's take a few moments to familiarize yourself with the back panel of the K2000. On the left is the on-off switch. AC receptacle and battery cover which allows you easy access to the internal batteries which back up user created programs. The voltage selector allows the K2000 to operate in different countries around the world without the need for an external power transformer. The back panel connectors are clearly labeled for easy identification. Continuing to the right we see the headphone input for use with standard 600 ohm headphones. To the right of the headphone input are the mix outputs, or stereo master outs. Next to the mix outs are the four separate outs, A left and right, and B left and right, can be used as four separate outs, or two stereo pairs. The separate outs can also serve as insert points. Now the advantage to this is you can take a sound that you want to isolate from the stereo mix, bring it out, send it through the ring tip sleeve configuration in the jacks, to an external effects processor or equalization unit. Send it back into the unit and then send it back through the stereo pair. This allows greater flexibility when programming multi-sequences and when using the instrument in a multi timbral mode. To the right of the output groups are the foot switch controller inputs. The default for foot switch 1 is sustain. For foot switch 2, sostenuto. The control pedal's default is MIDI control number four, foot controller. The foot switches and control pedal are completely programmable. Other real-time controllers will be discussed when we talk about section two, the front panel. 
The right of the back panel contains the media connectors for interfacing with media devices, external hard drives, and CD-ROM via the SCSI connector. The 2000 here also shows the optional sampling board, discussed later in section 11, optional support, and it features quarter-inch stereo analog input for user sampling from line-level sources, such as keyboards and guitars. To the right of the analog input are the digital ends, which support SPDIF, RCA jack, an optical connector, and AES-EBU connector. These are provided for digital transfer from DAT recorders, CD players, or other samplers. One last reminder, the sampling board is an option, and it can be purchased from your Kurzweil dealer. It must be installed inside your K2000. <laughs> This section will tour the front panel and explore the user interface. Many years of research went into designing the interface so you can get the most out of your instrument in as little time possible. Let's look at the control panel from left to right. You will notice there are two standard wheels. The left wheel always sends MIDI pitch band information. The right wheel is programmable and its default is MIDI control 1 or mod wheel. Next to the wheels are two sliders, volume, which controls the volume of the mix outs only, and controller, which can be assigned to control any function such as changing MIDI volume, sweeping a filter's cutoff, or crossfading between two sounds, and of course many other things. Its default is MIDI control 6 data. To the right of the sliders are a group of eight buttons which define the various modes of operation in the K2000. Look at the information found on the front panel. The titles in white highlight the eight operating modes. Green titles apply when editing any of these modes. Let's give a brief description of each of these eight modes and eight editing functions. Program mode, or mute one. Press the upper left hand button marked program. This is the main operating mode for the K2000. In program mode, you select programs. To the right of the program button is an LED which will illuminate confirming the K2000 is in program mode. There are three ways you can select a program. By rotating the alpha wheel to scroll, press the plus or minus decrement or increment buttons, or enter the program number on the alphanumeric keypad located on the right of the control panel. Press the enter button to initiate your selection. It's not necessary to press enter if you're selecting programs scrolling with the alpha wheel or the plus or minus buttons. A program contain up to three layers. A layer contains a key map, the samples as they're arranged on the keyboard, and all the associated parameter settings. These layers can overlap or be split. The programs are arranged in banks of 100 programs where bank 0 contains programs 1 to 99, bank 1 contains 100 to 99, and so on. Any bank of programs can be saved and loaded into any other bank. Programs will be more thoroughly discussed in section 5, creating programs, and storage will be covered later in section 3, disk operations. When you're editing a program on the K2000, this button will be used for muting layer 1 in a particular program. Setup mode, mute 2 button. Next, we'll look at the setup mode. We can define a setup as a kind of super programming, allowing for three different programs to be layered, split, or overlap. Remember, programs can have up to three layers. In setup mode, up to nine layers can be arranged across the keyboard in any location you choose. We'll look closer at setups in section 6, setup mode. When editing a program on the K2000, this button will be used for muting layer 2 in a particular program. Next, let's look at quick access mode. Quick access mode is designed to aid in live performance and offer flexibility to the session musician. Quick access banks are provided to help you organize your sounds, saving your favorite programs and setups as an organized group. 
A bank can contain 10 programs or setups in any combination. When you select a bank, all 10 programs and setups will be visible in the display for immediate selection. The K2000 comes shipped with a few template banks. We'll see how to create your own banks later in Section 7, Quick Access Mode. When editing a program on the K2000, this button will be used for muting Layer 3 in a particular program. Next, the bottom left button in this group is called the Effects button, or Effects Bypass. We refer to effects as meaning reverb, delay, chorus, etc. The K2000 is a powerful multi-effects processor allowing you to chain up to four effects simultaneously. We have provided you with factory effect programs which you can edit to create your own effect programs. Because the effect processor is global and applies to all sounds, we felt it was important to allow you a way of directly accessing the effects processor. You can quickly adjust your wet, dry mix edit and change the effects program or allow the K2000 to ignore effects which were part of a particular program in favor of a master setting which will not change as you change programs. We will get into the effects processor in section 8 editing and effect. When editing a K2000 program this button will allow you to bypass any effects which were present. MIDI mode or previous page in this mode, you will find all parameters regarding MIDI operation, including selecting Omni, Poly, and Multi mode, assigning programs to MIDI channels, and MIDI controller send and receive information. More details will follow in Section 9, MIDI Operations. When editing a program on the K2000, this button will allow you to return to the previous page you had been looking at. This can be very handy when going back and forth between two pages, like Envelope and Amplitude. Next, we come to the Master Mode, or Mark button. Under the Master Mode, you will find all those parameters which apply to the entire instrument, like Global Transpose and Global Intonation Tables. More on Master Parameters later in Section 10, Master Operations. When editing a K2000 program, this button will be used for marking particular pages which you will want to use often. You can set up a kind of a shortcut way of cycling through only those pages which are important to you. The button underneath Master is the Song button. The Song Mode or Jump button. The K2000 can play back Type 0 standard MIDI sequence files. These can be loaded into your user memory and played back from the K2000. Further, these sequences can be saved to the instrument's internal floppy, optional external SCSI hard drive, or optional internal hard drive. This feature allows you to use the K2000 in place of your computer as a play-only sequencer. We have loaded some demo songs in from the factory which you can listen to. More about song mode later in section 4, song mode. When editing a program, this button will be used for jumping to particular pages which you had previously marked with the mark button. Disk mode or compare. Disk mode deals with all storage media. You will select this mode when you wish to name, save, or load samples, programs, etc. to or from the K2000's floppy drive. This mode also allows you to access optional external SCSI drives, a CD-ROM drive, or an optional internal hard drive. We will be covering this mode in greater detail in Section 3, Disk Operation. When editing a program, this button will be used to compare the edited program with the original. Let's continue the front panel tour. Over to the right of the eight mode buttons are two buttons, one with an up and one with a down arrow. These perform a variety of functions. For example, when the K2000 is in program mode, use these buttons to scroll through the MIDI channels. When you're editing a program, use these buttons to scroll through the layers in that program. When editing a setup, these buttons will be used to scroll through three zones. When the instrument is in quick access mode, these buttons are used to select banks. Finally, these buttons are used when you're on the channel page in MIDI mode to scroll through the MIDI channels and view the assigned programs and parameters. Directly beneath the channel bank buttons is the edit button. This button takes the K2000 from the normal play state into the edit state. This button is used to edit programs, setups, quick access banks, effects, as well as MIDI, master, and song parameters. 
There are six soft touch buttons underneath the generous 240 by 64 display. These are used to select the various pages which you will use when editing the K2000. These buttons are used often as you will see in section 5, Creating Programs. To the right of the display are the cursor buttons which perform a number of functions primarily allowing you to navigate around the information shown in the display. Below the cursor is the exit button which allows you to exit the edit mode. The rest of the control panel is devoted to data entry. To the right of the cursor buttons is the alpha wheel and decrement increment buttons. These are used for changing values or scrolling through programs, setups, quick access banks, or to select files from the disk directory. Finally, on the far right of the control panel is the alphanumeric keypad used when naming programs, banks, etc., or entering specific numbered values. You will appreciate how easy this keypad makes naming things. Directly under the buttons labeled 1 through 9 are three buttons side by side, labeled minus plus, zero, and clear, respectively. Under these buttons, you'll see subtext labeling the same buttons as upper, lower, zero through nine, and space. The button labeled minus plus is used when you've entered a numeric value and you want to switch it from a positive value to a negative value, and vice versa. When you're naming a file, program, setup, etc., this button toggles between uppercase and lowercase letters. The button marked zero will enter a value of zero when programming. When naming, this button allows you to scroll through numbers zero through nine. The button marked clear is used to clear a particular numeric value and reset the parameter to its lowest value. When naming, this button erases the letter or number over the cursor and leaves a blank space. Right underneath these buttons are two buttons found side by side marked enter and cancel respectively. It will not be necessary to press the enter button when you're editing a program, setup, or quick access map. You will have to press enter after entering a program number on the alphanumeric keypad to confirm your choice. The cancel button will act as an undo or clear button when you just change your mind about a particular program or setup number you've just typed in, provided you haven't pressed the enter button yet. This concludes the front panel tour. Now, let's get into more specifics. about today is the DOS file system built into the K2000. The disk drive is a high density 1.44 megabyte floppy and the file system is directly compatible with MS-DOS computers. This means that you can take the files that are created on the K2000 and look at them on your DOS machine. Two of the possible applications of this would be to have an editor librarian that directly could manipulate the files that were created on the K2000 and the direct transmission of K2000 files over a modem, say to a bulletin board system or perhaps to your friend across the country or even around the world. The disk system in the K2000 is MS-DOS based using three and a half inch high density or double density diskettes. If you name your programs using only eight uppercase letters or numbers, you'll be able to read these disks in an IBM compatible computer and copy or erase these files in your computer. Now this is important. If you choose to use lowercase letters or punctuation, you may destroy your files trying to look at them in an IBM clone. Be sure to have some blank disks on hand at all times to back up your work. Now let's take a closer look at the disk mode. Remove your factory disk from the floppy drive and slide the left tab up, closing the window. This now enables you to write to the disk. Insert the disk back into the drive and press the disk button. The display will show you six options. Load, Save, Sleep, Rename, Delete, and Format, which you can select by pressing one of the soft buttons found directly beneath each option. The sleep button allows you to turn off SCSI devices provided the drive manufacturer incorporates this option. We will recommend several drives at the end of this video in section 11 
Options and Support. Let's discuss how data is stored in the K2000. Think of a series of folders, where each folder contains one type of object. For example, folder 1 contains all programs, folder 2 contains all setups, and so on. Each folder uses the same numbering scheme, 0 through 999. These folders are all grouped together to form a bank. The first two bank numbers, 0 and 1, are reserved for factory ROM-based objects. The next eight banks, numbers 2 through 9, are reserved for user-created objects. When you save a bank, all objects in that bank will be saved. When loading, the same is true. Remember we instructed you to load a disk file titled Video into the K2000 at the very beginning of this video? Now, let's save the bank of programs which you originally loaded into the 900's bank back to your floppy disk. Press the Save button and the display asks you to Save As, allowing you the option of naming your file. The middle two buttons move the cursor from left to right. Let's use the alpha wheel to change characters. Let's name this file KURZ2000, K-U-R-Z-2000. Press the soft button under the right arrow button to move the cursor to the right. Now let's finish naming the file. Notice you are restricted to eight uppercase letters conforming to the DOS format. If you wish to insert or delete a letter, number, or symbol, press the button above the appropriate instruction in the display. When you are finished naming your file, press the button under OK. Rotate the alpha wheel to the right until you see 900 through 999. Once again, press the button under OK. The display will prompt, please wait. When saving is done, the display will return to the main screen, showing your six options. To confirm you have saved the file, press the button under Load, and then rotate the alpha wheel to the right until you see the file KURS2000 in the highlighted blue box. Press Cancel, and then Exit to leave the disk mode, and return to the program mode. Any programs, setups, or quick access banks as well as user-created multi-effects programs and demo songs will also be saved to disk. To format a disk, place a blank disk or one you wish to erase in the drive after you have write-enabled it. The tab should be in the up position, window closed. Warning! Make sure you don't format your factory disk or you will erase it permanently. This is important. Press the disk button. Press the soft button under Format. Respond to the question, Format this disk, question mark, by pressing the soft button under the Yes response. Once again, respond Yes to the question asking Continue. Press the Yes button once again when the display asks a final time, Are you really sure? The display will allow you to select whether the disk should be formatted as a 720K or 1.44 megabyte disk. We will select 1.44 megabyte as we are using a high density diskette. When formatting is done, the display will return to its previous state showing your options. Press the Song button and look at the display. Notice you can highlight songs and scroll through the various titles or program where you can adjust the current playing keyboard. Great for accompanying sequences live. The bottom row of buttons work like a tape recorder, offering record, play, stop, and delete. Press play when you selected the song you wish to hear and that song will begin playing. Press stop to stop the song and delete if you wish to permanently erase that song. 
Consult your owner's manual to learn how to convert Type 0 MIDI file sequences and load them into the K2000 for playing back. To exit this mode, press the exit button and return to program mode. Now, take a few minutes to listen to the factory created demos. John Teal, um, one of the engineers on the K2000. Um, I'd like to tell you a little bit about some of the convenience features that the K2000 provides. Don't be afraid to play the K2000 from within one of its editors. The K2000 provides a lot of ways to get around the instrument. One very powerful feature is the previous page button. When you're in one of the editors, pressing the previous page button will bring you back to the last page you were on. It actually remembers the last four pages you were on, so pressing it repeatedly will bring you to each of those four pages. Another powerful feature in the K2000 are the jump and mark buttons. These allow you to mark certain pages in an editor, and then by using the jump button, jump between those marked pages. It allows you to mark any number of pages in the editor. If you want, you can mark all the pages. Let's take a quick look at the display. Notice the highlighted choices at the bottom of the display. The octave minus and octave plus allow you to quickly transpose, as you can see in the upper middle portion of the LCD. The panic button allows you to send the all notes off command to external devices. The view button resizes the program name. There are two modes, large and small. The display allows six programs to be visible at the same time and are shown in smaller type. The channel minus and channel plus buttons allow you to change the MIDI channel you're on. Also in this mode, to the left of the program names, is a large drop shadow rectangle showing you how many layers are in this program, the key map number, and name. The top illuminated bar shows you that you are in program mode, whether or not the program has been transposed, and the MIDI channel you are on. The display will appear the same in setup mode except that MIDI and program information will be displayed in the drop shadow box instead of the key map and program names. In quick access, the view button just resizes the program or setup selected. Before we begin basic programming, we're going to disable the effects so you can hear the quality of the sound and filters clearly. To disable your effects, press the effects button. Press your down cursor to illuminate the wet dry percentage. Press the zero button on the keypad and press enter. You have now successfully disabled your reverb. To return to the program mode, press the program button. You may want to listen to the raw sampled sounds before you start editing them. To do this, we'll call up program 999 test program which you loaded in at the beginning of this video. Press the button numbered 9 on the keypad three times, then press enter. You have now called up program 999, test program. Press the edit button and you will see the main edit screen. You are now looking at the basic building block of the variable architecture synthesizer, the algorithm. The boxes from left to right represent the signal path through the K2000. Each box in an algorithm represents an individual module. Take a moment to turn your alpha wheel to view some of the other algorithms. You will notice that the signal flow changes as do the number of active modules. As you'll see, each module can have several possible functions other than the one you currently see. Turn your alpha wheel back to algorithm 1 to continue.
In the display from left to right, you will notice the following options. More, used to shift the pages on the bottom backwards. Algorithm, used to select the algorithm page. Layer, where you can adjust the parameters such as keyboard range and delay, as well as enabling or disabling controllers. Key map, where you select the various sampled waveforms. Pitch, where you can control the pitch of the waveform. And more, to advance to the next set of pages. We'll explore these a bit more in the next example. Press the button under the key map page and you'll see Grand Piano. Turn your alpha wheel, press your minus plus buttons to scroll through waveforms or enter the waveforms number on the keypad. This is how we select a waveform. You may now want to pause the tape and listen to the raw waveforms. But before continuing, please return to the Grand Piano key map. Now, let's return to the algorithm page and begin editing. Press the button under Algorithm. It will be very helpful to understand what we mean when we say a variable architecture and just how sound is created. As you already know, a program can contain up to three layers. Before you can understand the layer, you first have to understand the fundamental building block of a layer and the heart of vast architecture, the algorithm. My name is Jennifer Haruska, and I'm a soundware engineer at uh, Kurzweil, Young Chang. Uh, Kurzweil has always had this reputation of being a company that provides sort of high quality multi samples for sound playback, sample playback. Um, and certainly this machine will do that as, in addition, but uh, we spent quite a bit of time here trying to put together the, the greatest synthesizer that we could. And uh, so I wanted to show you just a couple of things that it can do. Um, of course, if you, if you bought this machine specifically for Kurzweil's uh, samples of electronic and, and acoustic instruments, then you definitely won't be disappointed. I've certainly spent enough time in my dark padded room here pouring over loop points and, and uh, key ranges and stuff like that to make it sound good. Uh, but there's so much more you can do. For example, this is just a pretty straight ahead string sound, ensemble strings. And that's nice and it sounds pretty good and everything, but you can take that same string sample and you can get something that will sound like this. And that's just one layer of strings. But suddenly we sound like we're in the middle of the Amazon forest somewhere with birds and water just going on all over the place. And uh, that was accomplished by taking that same string sample, just one layer, and putting it through a series of bandpass filters, and uh, then modulating those bandpass filters with uh, something that we call FUNS, F-U-N-S, fun with FUNS. Uh, that's short for functions, and functions can be used in a variety of ways, everything from uh, putting two control sources together and trying to weigh one a little more than the other, to providing sort of random modulation of uh, string samples such as this, or any sample really, to, um, to get a variety of effects like the birds and, and water type of sound that we just heard. So that's one interesting thing you can do with the samples. Uh, either in ROM or, or samples that you load into uh, RAM. It doesn't matter, either way. Um, another type of synthesis that was really popular not too long ago was so the D50 style LA synthesis, which was, you know, the, the real chiffy kind of sound. And that was mostly accomplished by taking attack transients, which were little short little samples, and, and attaching them onto other waveforms. And, and uh, we've provided that a very similar type of synthesis like that. So if you're into the chiff, we've got lots of chiff for you. And or if you are an analog synthesizer,
are buff and you've got Moogs and Mellotrons lining your, your studio walls, um, we should let you know that the K2000 has uh, on the order of 96 oscillators inside of it. And yes, you can stack those all up on a single key if you want to. And uh, 96, that's a real number, and that's a lot of oscillators. That's, uh, that's a far cry from, the, uh, from the, the typical synthesizers that come out that have, you know, two, four, six, maybe eight oscillators that you have to detune, you know, quite a bit in order to get them to sound pretty fat. Um, it's, it's not actually analog. It, it is still digital, but it sure sounds analog. Um, I'll give you an example of that. architecture synthesis technology and that's exactly what it is um, on each single channel you can choose a style of synthesis and then combine that with another style of synthesis on another channel and stack them all up and uh, and just get incredible sounds so enjoy don't be afraid to dig into your synthesizer a little bit it's actually pretty easy to use and uh, even if you just go in there and start playing around with some parameters, you're going to come up with some really cool stuff. As the term algorithm applies to the K2000, an algorithm can be explained as a set of rules or instructions. Think of an algorithm as the boundaries and markers, the basic tools that you can use to create your expressive custom sounds. This will become more obvious as we begin programming. There are 31 different algorithms available to you, each offering different possibilities of how you can create and shape the sound. Some algorithms allow you to use four oscillators or sound sources at the same time without eating up any of the 24 voices. Some allow for dynamic stereo panning, parametric EQ, and so on. In algorithm one, you'll notice three boxes which represent the synthesis modules used in the current algorithm. Algorithm 1 uses three modules. Some use more. The maximum number is five. The first module is pitch. All algorithms start with a pitch module. You can't select any other function for this module other than pitch. However, there are many parameters you can use to control pitch, such as velocity, mono pressure, LFOs, and many others. The middle block is currently marked none. However, this block offers many possibilities. Press the down cursor one time and highlight the middle block. Rotate the alpha wheel to the right and you will see High Freak Stimulator, a function which works like an oral exciter, enhancing the upper frequencies, necessary for a bright rock piano or a sharp steel string guitar. Press the Edit button and notice the top of the display shows you Edit Program 1, Page F1, frequency of the high frequency stimulator and that this program has one layer and that's the one you're editing. Press the right more button one time and you will see F1 frequency, F2 drive, F3 amplitude and F4 amplitude. The F4 amplitude page is for adjusting the overall volume of this particular layer. The F1 through F3 keys apply to the stimulator. Most of the editing pages will look like this one, so once you're familiar with this page, you'll quickly know your way around. You'll notice a coarse and fine adjustment for setting the frequencies you wish to excite. Key track, allowing for the keyboard to control the excited frequencies. Velocity track, allowing you to control the effect by touch. And a pad in case you overdrive this module. Yes, you can intentionally cause your K2000 to clip or distort if you choose. However, we recommend you have very tolerant speakers. On the right half of the display, you'll notice Source 1 and Depth. You can assign any controller to act as a source input and below set the desired active depth. 
Below source 1 and depth is source 2 for an additional modulation source. Depth control allowing you to assign any controller like pedals, wheels, or slider to control the modulation source, minimum depth for a constant level of modulation, and maximum depth to be reached by adjusting the depth controller. This is useful for creating rotor speaker effects where there's a slow rotor turning and at the flick of a wheel a sudden speeding up to the fast speed. Later, you can listen to program 998, Tone Wheel Organ, but now let's do some editing. Before we adjust any parameters, let's listen to the unedited program. Let's set the course frequency control to C0, 16 Hz, by rotating your alpha wheel to the left. Next, let's set source 1 to mod wheel. Press your right cursor one time and you will have highlighted source 1. Rotate your alpha wheel slowly to the right until you see M wheel. Take a moment and scroll through the various control sources available to you. They are extremely abbreviated and a complete description of each is available in your user's manual. When you get back to M wheel, stop. Press your down cursor one time and highlight depth. Rotate your alpha wheel to the right until you see 10,800 cents. Next, press the button under the F2 option and notice the top bar informs you that you are now on the high frequency drive page. This screen offers almost the same choices as the last one. Set the adjust to 4 dB using your alpha wheel. Set source 1 to M wheel using your cursor and alpha wheel. Now set the depth below source 1 to 12 dB. Next, press the button under F3 and you will arrive at the high frequency stimulator amplitude page where you can boost or cut the effects volume. Let's set the adjust to 2 dB. Now, play the piano sample and move the mod wheel up and down to notice the effect. Press the left more button and you will have brought back the main screen once again allowing you to select the algorithm page. Press the button under the algorithm option and you will see high frequency stimulator illuminated. Now let's try a different effect. Rotate your alpha wheel slowly to the right and you will notice the display changes to parametric EQ. Parametric EQ allows for precise adjustment and contouring of the harmonic frequencies of a sound like putting a little extra punch in your kick drum or a little more snap in your slap bass. Turn the alpha wheel again and you see steep resonant bass. Steep resonant bass offers a powerful resonant filter and a bass boost for the ultimate analog synth bass. Let's make some minor adjustments and see what happens. First, let's select a waveform, say Sawtooth. Press the button under key map. Enter the number 151 on your alphanumeric keypad and then press enter. You should see 151 Sawtooth. Press the right more button one time and press F2 Res for resonance. Using the cursor, highlight depth under source 1, then enter 0 on your keypad to clear the value. Press your up cursor once, then your left cursor once to highlight adjust. Set the adjust to 10.0 dB. Press the button under F3 Amp and set the adjust to 8 using your alpha wheel or minus plus buttons. Now play the keyboard and push the mod wheel up and down and listen to the filter sweep. <laughs> Let's try one more. Press the left more button, then the algorithm button. 
Next, turn your alpha wheel slowly to the right until you see four pole low pass with separation. Play the keyboard and notice the difference in filters. The four pole completely screens out all frequencies while the steep resonant bass didn't. Try assigning source one on the F1 frequency page to M pressure. To do this, press the write more button one time, then press the F1 button. Use your cursor to highlight source one. Enter 33 on your keypad, then the enter button, or scroll on your alpha wheel until you see M pressure. Now try playing a note and pressing down hard and listen to the filter sweep. Let's name and save this program to complete this exercise. You may do this two different ways. First, you may press the button under the left more option until you come to name program. Press the button under Name Program and notice the options in the display. Delete will delete characters. Insert will insert a space. The left and right arrow buttons will move the cursor. The OK button should only be selected when naming has been completed. To change letters, you may use the alpha wheel, increment decrement buttons, or the alphanumeric keypad. Remember, the upper-lower button changes from uppercase to lowercase letters, and the zero button will scroll through numbers zero through nine. Let's name this program Press Sweep 1. When you have named this program, press OK. Next, press the button under Save Program. Notice the display will ask you if you wish to replace the original test program. If you weren't through editing, you would press Cancel. But since we are through, we want to save this program to the next available user program location. To do this, press both the minus and plus buttons simultaneously. Notice that now you will be saving to ID number 200, which is the first available user location. Press the button under Save and the display will return to the algorithm page. Before we exit, let's take a closer look at the key map page. Press the key map button. Notice you can select and change the key map which contains the sampled ROM waves. You can transpose and adjust the key map tracking from the keyboard or velocity and adjust the timbre shift parameter which changes the timbre characteristics of the samples in the key map. You can set which control source, if any, will enable you to select a factory defined alternate attack. The user may edit the factory alternate attack. You can select whether the samples play back normally, backwards, bidirectionally, or select noise which disables the current key map in favor of a noise generator. Noise is often used to create wind and surf type programs. To exit this mode, press exit. Notice that you are on program 200, press sweep 1. Play the K2000 to be sure the program plays as it did before you saved it. <coughs> to see the other way to save, we'll have to edit this program a bit. Let's once again enter the edit mode by pressing the edit button now. Press the down cursor one time to highlight the module four pole low pass with separation. 
Press the edit button once again to see the F1 frequency page and change the course adjustment to 17 Hz by rotating your alpha wheel one click to the right. Now press the exit button and notice the display prompts save press sweep one before exiting. Under this prompt are four options, rename, cancel, yes and no. Let's rename this press sweep two. Press the button under rename now. Next, press the button under the right arrow until the cursor is under the number one. You may press either of the increment decrement buttons or the zero button or you may turn your alpha wheel one click to the right to advance the number to number two. When you're done, press the button under OK. The display will again prompt save press sweep two before exiting question mark. Press the button under the yes option. Notice the display asks you once again if you want to replace the original. Since you don't want to replace the original but rather you want to save this as a new program, press both the decrement and increment buttons simultaneously to advance the next open user program location which is program 201. Press the button under the save option and the display will return to the normal program mode. Let's continue experimenting. Enter the edit mode by pressing the edit button. Press the down cursor button to highlight the four pole low pass with separation module. Pause the tape and continue rotating the alpha wheel and playing the keyboard while pressing harder and softer on the keyboard and you will hear some amazing things as a result of changing the kind of filter selected. To continue, set the middle module back to none. This is the end of the study of algorithm one and we've only scratched the surface. Now it's time to define what a layer is. This is where most of your programming time will be spent. As you can see in the diagram, a layer is made up of many pages. Each layer is independent and most parameters are available to you on a per layer basis. Take a moment to look through the available pages. Remember, only the effects and common pages are global and these apply to all layers in a program simultaneously. We're going to be creating a program together that will familiarize you with the K2000. In this program we'll use three layers, dual electric piano, ensemble strings, and dual electric bass. We'll learn how to assign the ensemble strings to the mod wheel using the mod wheel as a volume control to allow real-time mixing. We're also going to assign the dual electric bass to the control slider, again for real-time mixing. We're going to assign an LFO to the dual electric piano to control dynamic panning. And finally, we'll add an effect and we'll name and save the program. When you're creating a multi-layered program, you can have four different options. You can number one, add a new layer. This is bringing in just the raw sound. It's not adding any user created envelopes or LFO or other modulation sources. Number two, you can duplicate a layer. This will copy the layer that you're currently looking at in your display. Or number three, you can import a layer. This is bringing in a sound from another program with all the editing, the sample plus the envelopes and modulation routings. Or number four, you can delete a particular layer. Remember, programs can have three layers. We've provided a special program called Drum Mode. This allows for up to 32 layers to be used at one time. Each layer can have its own custom DSP treatment for EQing or other application. We'll look more about Drum Mode later in Section 9, MIDI Operation. And we'll study closer the effects processor in Section 8, Effect Editing. Now, press exit and then no to return to program mode. To begin, call up program 999 by pressing three nines and then enter. You should be looking at test program again. Press the edit button and rotate the alpha wheel one click to the right to select algorithm two. Next, press the down cursor to highlight two pole low pass. Turn your alpha wheel one click to the left 
and none should appear. Next, let's select the dual electric piano key map. So we press the key map button to go into the key map page and scroll with your alpha wheel one click and you will see dual electric piano. Now play to confirm you are hearing the dual electric piano. Notice the upper right side of the display showing we're on layer one of a one layer program. The left number always tells the layer you're viewing and the right number tells how many layers are in that particular program. Next we'll be adding strings. So let's copy this layer and then you can switch the key map from dual electric piano to strings. To copy a layer, press the left more button one time and then press dupe layer. Notice the upper right side of the display shows you're on layer two of a two layer program. Press the right more button, then press the key map button. Now let's change the key map to strings by rotating our alpha wheel to the right four clicks. Notice that ensemble strings are now on layer two. To see layer one, press either of the layer buttons to the left of the display. Pause the tape now a moment to confirm you have layered strings with the electric piano. Next, let's transpose the strings up one octave. So recall layer two to the display using the layer buttons if you're not already on the strings and press down your cursor to highlight transpose. You can enter the value on the alpha keypad or just use the alpha wheel and set the transpose for 12 ST or 12 semitones. Now let's play this to verify. Important note, all transposing is done on the key map page and not the pitch page. If you were to adjust pitch on the pitch page, you would be pitch shifting the sample playback, not transposing the original sample. This would result in a change in timbre as well as position on the keyboard. Now press the mute one button to silence layer one. Select the pitch button and play across the keyboard while rotating the alpha wheel to the left slowly. Hear the pitch shift effect on the strings layer. Now let's return this parameter to zero semitones. Next, press the key map button and select timbre shift. Timbre shift will pitch shift the samples and then transpose them back to their original keyboard positions. Rotate your alpha wheel to the left and listen to the effect in the following example. Let's return this parameter to zero and press the mute one button to unmute the electric piano. Next let's get bass into the picture. Once again we will want to copy layer one. Using your layer buttons to the left of the display, scroll until you see one slash two or one of two in the upper right corner indicating you are on layer one, the layer you will be copying. Press the left more button until you see the dupe layer button and press it. Now press the right more button once and select the key map page. You should see dual electric piano since we just copied layer one, the dual electric piano. Highlight the key map with the up cursor and rotate your alpha wheel to the right until you see electric pick bass. Next, press
press your down cursor one time to highlight transpose once again. Tune the bass down an octave using your alpha wheel. Hi, I'm Jeff G. I work for the Soundware Group here at Yongchang Research and Development. Uh, it's my great fortune to work on sounds for uh, the Kurzweil instruments. Um, I'm sure you're excited about this instrument as well as me. Uh, let me just give you a couple of pointers about how you may use performance controls that you may not have known about. The factory presets are loaded with uh, examples of how you can use a synthesizer, but of course it will be years and years before we actually explore everything. But just uh, to um, help open up the possibilities in your mind, uh, maybe I can show you a couple examples of how we use control sources that are different from the conventional uh, ways of using control sources. By control source, I mean attack velocity, pressure, the mod wheel, the pitch wheel, the control slider, pedals. All of these things are control sources which you could assign to change any aspect of the sound. In this case, attack velocity is controlling how much high frequency content in the string sound. sitar sound, where if I hit a velocity of double forte or more, I get a little pitch envelope. Another control source, the controller slider. Now this can be used for a number of different things. Here I have it used for the filter cut off of the strings behind this piano. yet another control on the mod wheel, which is an LFO on the resonance. This sound is similar. It uses the mod wheel to engage a layer. pressure to do something pretty outrageous. Um, it's actually going to add thunder at the end of the tune. A little more pressure. Here we'll use pressure to change the there's one note. Now, if I play legato, I'm going to get the glissando and portamento. And pressure can give us the filter cut. Here the mod wheel is going to trigger an ASR. I have a steady state AM synthesis patch here. Um, if I raise the mod wheel, I will trigger an, an ASR. you to explore the factory setups for ideas and change them to match exactly what you want because there's no excuse for not getting exactly what you want with this synthesizer. Now we have all of our essential elements. Let's proceed. First, let's adjust the volume of the layers. Press the right more button until you see F4 amp button and press it. Adjust the volume using your alpha wheel and then listen. It's important not to boost too much as this can cause clipping or distortion. 
Sometimes it's better to cut the volume of other layers rather than to boost too much. Let's boost the bass adjust to 8 dB. Press the down layer button until you see L2 to change the volume of the strings. Cut the strings by minus 8 dB and the Rhodes is fine. If you wanted to adjust it, just press the down layer button once again to take you to the dual electric piano amplifier page and boost or cut. Let's adjust the layer's keyboard ranges starting with the dual electric piano. Remember, you can see the layer you're on in the upper right hand side of the display and change layers with your layer buttons to the left of the display. Find layer 1. Press the Write More button until you see the Layer page appear in the display and press it. Notice that you can set keyboard ranges, adjust velocity and delay, and disable or enable your controllers per layer, not just per programming. Using your cursor, highlight low key and using your alpha wheel, set it to C4. Do this also for layer 2 strings. Press the layer button. For layer 3, the bass, set the high key to B3. Now, play your keyboard and confirm the split and layers are responding. Good. Now we can assign layer 2, the strings, to the mod wheel and the bass to the controller slider. There are many ways to do this, the easiest being in the layer page. Make sure you're on layer 2 and in the layer page. Use your cursor to highlight Enable On. Turn the alpha wheel one click to the right and you've assigned this layer to the mod wheel. Play and confirm by moving your mod wheel forward to turn the strings on and backwards towards you to shut them off. Now you notice this way is not very expressive since this function works like on and off switch. Please set the enable back to on so we can continue. Now let's assign the mod wheel to gradually turn up and down the volume of the strings rather than just on and off. Press the write more button one time until you see the F4 amp page button and press it. Remember earlier we cut the strings by minus 8 dB? Let's really turn them down and set the adjust to minus 42 dB. Now if you play your keyboard you won't hear any strings. Using your cursor, highlight source 1, and using your alpha wheel, set it to M wheel. Next, using your cursor, highlight depth, and set it to 34 dB. Now play and move the mod wheel, and notice the gradual increase. Next, let's assign the bass to the controller slider in much the same way. Using your layer buttons, scroll to layer 3. Highlight adjust and set it to minus 42 dB. Highlight source 1 and set it to data. Let's set the depth to 50 dB. Now when you play the keyboard, you notice you can balance the strings and bass relative to the electric piano in real time. Now let's 
create a user envelope for the strings to make them a bit less dry. Using your layer button, select Layer 2 for strings. Press the Write More button until you see the AMP Envelope page and press it. Using your Alpha wheel, you can toggle back and forth between a user created envelope and the natural envelope. Set this to User. Set Attack 1 or ATT1 to 1.26 seconds at 100% volume. Next, set Release 1 to 2.60 and notice the nice slow attack and release we created. Notice the envelope on the display. Remember, your mod wheel is controlling the volume of the strings. Select Layer 1. Press the left More button until you see Output and select it. Using the cursor, highlight the top stereo placement map and use the alpha wheel to position it to the far right. Now highlight the bottom placement map and set it to the far left. There are many output configurations possible. For a more detailed explanation, refer to your printed owner's manual. Next, let's press the left more button until you see the F3 POS page and press it. That's for position. Highlight Source 1 and set it to LFO1 by rotating the alpha wheel to the left. Let's set the depth to 100%. Now, play and enjoy the stereo panning of the electric piano. If you want to change the amount of panning, readjust the depth from 100% to whatever you like. If you want to adjust the rate of panning, highlight LFO1 and press Edit. By rotating the alpha wheel, you'll be resetting the rate of the LFO. Notice you can assign a controller to turn on the LFO and set a minimum constant rate and a maximum rate which will only kick it in when you engage your controller. Let's assign a maximum rate of 5.6 Hz and we'll make the controller the sustain pedal. Now play and step on the sustain panel, then release it and play, and hear the difference. <laughs> Lastly, let's add an effect to the whole program. Press the Write More button until you come to the Effect option and press it. Highlight Effects Preset and set it to 900 Sweet Hall. And set the Wet Dry Mix to 48%. Now let's listen to what we've created. You'll probably want to save this program, so name it Layers and put it at number 202. This tutorial section is designed to familiarize you with many of the programming possibilities. Next, we'll explore the setup mode. Setup mode is perhaps the most powerful mode found on the K2000 because of the thousands of combinations and possibilities. Before we move on to look at setup mode, let's define what a setup is. A setup 
is a MIDI transmission configuration which allows the local keyboard to play three MIDI channels at the same time. These three MIDI zones can play a different program and zones can overlap. In program mode you can have three layers but the local keyboard can only transmit on one MIDI channel at a time but in setup mode you can have three programs with up to three layers each and assign each program to a MIDI zone. This means you can create nine layer timbres using three programs where each program transmits on a different MIDI channel. Of course, the K2000 can receive all 16 channels for multi timbral playback. When you're sequencing using a setup, be sure to set your sequence program in multi record mode. Also, be sure that the MIDI channels you're recording on correspond with those channels being transmitted from the K2000. Otherwise, you will not hear the same sound played back that you played in your sequence. Now press the setup button and notice the drop shadow box now shows information about which MIDI channels and which programs are contained in the setup. This display also features the octave buttons allowing for easy transposition, a panic or all notes off button which can be a lifesaver in a live situation to silence stuck notes, and the view button which resizes the setup name for easy viewing. Let's create a setup and you'll understand this section much better. First, let's select setup 999 by entering 999 on the keypad and pressing enter. The display should show test setup. Notice MIDI channel 1, also referred to as zone 1, has program 999 test program assigned to it and it covers the entire range of C-1 to C-9 as indicated by the line under the program name. MIDI channel 2, also referred to as zone 2, has program 999 assigned but only covers a portion of the keyboard range. And MIDI channel 3, or zone 3, has program 999 assigned and covers a different keyboard range. Press the edit button and notice the top highlighted bar shows the zone you are editing in the upper left hand corner. At the bottom of the display you will see set range used to assign the program to a keyboard range, name, save, delete, and dump, referring to a SysX command allowing you to dump that particular setup to any SysX recorder. Take a few moments now to look at the display. The left column allows you to select the MIDI transmission channel, transpose, and adjust high and low keyboard ranges for the zone you're editing, as well as select global effects. The middle column allows you to select local control, MIDI, or both whether or not pitch bend and program change will be transmitted for that MIDI channel and adjusting the effects wet and dry mix. The effect and mix levels apply globally to all three zones since you can only select one effect at a time. The right column allows you to assign controllers to functions on a per zone basis. Let's leave test program assigned to zone 1 and next select zone 2 by pressing the upper zone button to the left of the display. Make sure the program is highlighted and rotate the alpha wheel one click to the left and assign tone wheel organ to zone two. Now play and listen to the results. Next, let's select zone three by again pressing the upper zone button. Press your down cursor button to highlight transpose. Set the transpose of zone 3 to 12 semitones and play again. One final note. If you wish to edit a particular program in the edit setup mode, first highlight the program name, then press edit. After editing the program, press exit and you can rename and save the new program as you did earlier in section 5, creating a program. After saving, you'll notice you're still in the edit setup mode, a nice feature. To name and save your setup, press the name button and name it as you have named other programs. And then press save and select the ID number you wish to save to. User created setups have their own storage places. The first user slots begin at 200, as programs do also, but programs and setups do not share the same storage lists. Press the delete button if you wish to delete a setup.
Performance setups are an extremely powerful function in the K2000, especially if you're playing live. Um, whereas when you're playing programs, you're playing on one MIDI channel, and you have three layers. When you're playing performance setups, you are playing three programs on three different zones from the performance keyboard. Whether they overlap or not um, doesn't matter, but each zone has its completely independent uh, MIDI assignment. So it's similar to having the keyboard of the K2000 three times uh, in any configuration you want on a single performance setup. Um, a couple of examples of, of how I'm using performance setups at the moment. Here are two programs that are layered. And the control sources do the same thing they would do on the normal program. Here's a split. Another similar split, but the top half is layered. The flute. The pressure wind. Now when you're playing performance setups, since you have the possibility of playing on three different MIDI channels at once, and the K2000 may respond in mono mode or poly mode for each of those channels, you can combine mono glissando voices with uh, poly voices. Here I'm doing that, the pad called cymbal pads, and two mono voices, each with a slightly different portamento time. And the result is extremely powerful. performance setups, the 2000 automatically lets you release the sustain pedal from the old channels before sending the new channels. So that's how you can have smooth transitions between performance setups. These are just some of the ways you can use the performance setups. Choose programs that you like that you want to set up in combination for live performance. Um, and you're definitely ahead of the game as an accompanist or a keyboard player for solo uh, because so much power right under your keyboard. Next, we'll look at quick access mode. This is a very powerful feature for live performers who demand the ability to get around to a lot of sounds very quickly with very few button presses. Quick access mode is a kind of list the user can define. He can say, I want 10 of my favorite selections available at the touch of a button. These selections can either be programs or they can be setups. The user can then name and save these lists and you have up to 100 lists possible in memory. Before we go any further, let's take a look at how information is displayed. Press the quick access button and let's discuss the display. You see the same octave transpose, panic, view, and channel buttons as you've seen in program mode before. Also notice the top highlighted bar showing you the bank number and name. You also see 10 programs and or setups. An S before the number and name indicates this is a setup. Likewise, a P indicates a program. Next to the S or P is the ID number, followed by the name. The selections are arranged in four rows. 
The top row contains entries 1 to 3 from left to right. The second row contains entries 4 through 6 from left to right. The third row, entries 7 through 9. The bottom row has entry 10 in the middle. The entry numbers are arranged exactly as the numbers on the alphanumeric keypad. To select entries, use your keypad. Number 1 equals entry 1, number 2 equals entry 2, and so on. Or you may use the cursor buttons. Up or down takes you vertically through the bank. Left or right scrolls horizontally through the bank. You may also choose to use the alpha wheel or the decrement increment buttons to move forward or backward through the bank. To select an alternate bank, use the channel bank buttons to the left of the display. Notice the bottom highlighted bar shows the transposition of the bank, the current programmer setup, and the MIDI channel. Let's explore a quick access bank. First, press the upper channel bank button until you see number 900 test bank. Next, press button number 1. Now press the edit button and notice the display. You see three headings from left to right. Entry, type, and object. Under these, you see from left to right the entry number. Remember you have 10 entries per bank the type of entry, whether it be a program or setup, and the ID number and name. At the bottom of the display are name, save, delete, and dump, just as you saw in setup mode. Use the cursor buttons to highlight the entry and turn your alpha wheel to scroll through the 10 entries until you return to 1. Next, highlight type and scroll between program and setup then return this field to setup. Next, highlight the ID number and name and scroll until you see 999 test setup. Create your own banks and name and save as you did in setup mode. Quick access mode also has its own memory for user created banks. See section 3, disk operation for a more detailed explanation of memory allocation. Next, we'll focus on the effects processor and create a few effects programs. The K2000 has a very powerful multi-effects processor, which Kurzweil and Young Chang have licensed from the Digitech Corporation, a world-renowned high-end quality manufacturer of digital signal processing. We'd like to take a moment and acknowledge their help in making the K2000 a reality. With the multi-effects processor on the K2000, you can choose up to four simultaneous effects, including stereo reverb, stereo chorus, stereo delay, multi-tap, EQ, and others. When you couple this with the K2000's custom powerful per-channel DSP, you have a very flexible system. For this section, we'll use program 998, Tone Wheel Organ, as our basic starting place. Press the program button to return to program mode, enter 998 on the keypad, and then press the enter button. Press the effects button, and let's look at the display. You see, effect, where you select the effects programs, Wet dry mix controls the balance between the affected and dry signals. FX mode is the field where you specify the manner in which the effects processor is being used. There are several possible choices for this. Master mode applies the same effect to all programs, setups, and quick access banks regardless of program changes. You'll use the master mode when playing back multi-timbral sequences through the mix outputs for an overall reverb or EQ setting. The effects processor can only access one effect program at a time. Program mode allows you to assign different effects to different programs. In other words, the effect is part of the program. When you're playing live, you may want your lead synth sound to have a smooth delayed reverb effect. And when you switch to your mean bass, you want just a small amount of chorus and slap. 
When you're using the K2000 as a drum machine, you may need a kit that uses a short gated reverb setting. By sending a program change, you can switch to Killer Toms, which use a long gated reverb setting. For more demanding mix down situations, you'll probably want to use the separate outs for additional external effects processing. Setup mode works like program mode, allowing different effects to be stored as part of the setups. Lastly, auto, which allows both setups and programs in a quick access bank to use their respective effects. Below the effects mode is FX channel, referring to MIDI channel selection. You can instruct the effects processor to receive program changes from an external MIDI source. You may hard assign one specific MIDI channel for this purpose, or select current allowing program changes on any channel to automatically change the effects program. Let's call up the test effect we'll be using for this exercise. Highlight the effect and scroll using your alpha wheel until you come to 902 test effect. Set the wet dry mix to 50%, set the FX mode to master, and set the FX channel to current. Now play to confirm you are using program 998 tone wheel organ and test effect 902, which is a kind of echo and reverb program. Move the mod wheel and listen to the rotary speaker effect change speeds, speeding up and slowing down. This rotary effect is not created by the multi-effects processor, however, but rather by using LFOs. Let's edit the test effect and we'll see how powerful the processor is. Highlight the effect 902 test effect. Now press edit. Notice all the parameters you can edit. Look for a moment at the top highlighted bar showing you the basic effects algorithm, chorus, delay, hall, and mixer. Let's look at some of the other algorithms by pressing the up or down channel bank button and notice the descriptions change. Each algorithm has its own set of parameters which you can edit. Take a moment and edit some of the parameters if you like. Return to the chorus delay hall mix algorithm and stop. Notice the familiar name, save, delete, and dump functions underneath. Now, let's highlight reverb time just to hear how much variation you have before we leave this section. Use your alpha wheel to change the amount of reverb decay time and play to hear the change. See section 3, Disk Operations, for a detailed explanation of saving effects with the respective programs and setups to disk. Now let's become familiar with how the K2000 organizes MIDI information. K2000 has an extremely flexible MIDI implementation scheme. Let's look closely at how MIDI information is displayed. First, press the MIDI button, then press the button under Transmit. Notice the top highlighted bar shows Transmit, indicating you are looking at the MIDI Transmit page. Look at the bottom highlighted pages, showing Transmit, Receive, Channels, Program Change, Reset Channel, and panic, which sends the all notes off command. There are three columns, with the left column showing the MIDI transmission channel you will be editing. You can send global transposition information, select whether control is set to local keyboard, MIDI, or both. You can select on where program numbers higher than 127 are transmitted according to the new general MIDI spec, using control zero to indicate the bank. Off disables program change transmission. Your last choice is extended. 
a system that Kurzweil implemented in the version 5 software for the 1000 and 1200 series products where two program changes are sent with the first establishing the bank and the second being the program number. Velocity and pressure transmit maps can also be selected. You may use one of the preset maps or program your own. The middle column allows you to turn program change and pitch bend transmission data on or off and the right column allows you to assign your controllers to transmit specific data. Let's look at the receive page by pressing the receive button. Notice only two columns with the left column allowing you to select the basic MIDI channel which you would change when the K2000 is set to receive on only one MIDI channel in poly mode. You can select whether the K2000 receives mono or poly pressure or both. The all notes off parameter allows you to decide whether or not the K2000 will ignore the all notes off messages. You will need to set this to off when using a Roland controller or sequencer. You can select the method for receiving program changes with the same options described on the transmit page. Lastly, you can select the velocity and pressure maps which affect the K2000 when controlled by an external MIDI device. For example, if you are sending velocity from an older Yamaha DX7, you would select a different receive map than if you were sending velocity information from a Kurzweil K1000 SE. Now let's look at the right column where we can set the K2000's MIDI receive mode from multi which you would use for multi timbral sequence playback or poly for use when you want the K2000 to receive on one MIDI channel only and omni where the K2000 will receive data on all 16 channels but only allow one sound to play all that data. Directly under mode is SysX or system exclusive. This control allows you to set the K2000 system exclusive ID number for use in transferring data to and from the instrument. Next, we will look at the channel page and see how much adjustment can be made when setting up the K2000 to play in multi mode for multi timbral sequence playback. Now, press the channel button. Look at the top highlighted bar and notice it shows you the current MIDI channel you are editing. By pressing either of the channel bank buttons to the left of the display, you can scroll through all 16 MIDI channels. Scroll around once until you come back to the channel 1 and stop. You may turn independent MIDI channels on or off as well. You may also assign a specific program to a specific MIDI channel. You cannot assign setups, however, as they contain three MIDI channels which are being transmitted simultaneously. For each MIDI channel, you may override the panning assignments that are set as part of each program. Below pan is volume, where you can adjust the individual volume of a particular program on a per MIDI channel basis. The range is from 0 to 127. Output pair allows you to select the output assignments for each MIDI channel. You can select the A, FX, or mix outs, or the B, dry outputs. If set to program, the program's output assignments will be unaffected. Below output pair is headroom. You can boost up to 30 dB or cut up to 12 dB of gain on a per MIDI channel basis by overriding the program levels. When set to program, programs are unaffected. You'll notice directly across from program, pan, and volume, there are three parameters, all which say lock. You can choose on or off. This lock allows you to decide whether incoming MIDI data will control panning, volume, and program changes. When the lock is on, incoming MIDI messages will be ignored, and conversely, when the lock is off, that particular MIDI channel will respond to incoming MIDI messages. Next, let's press the program change button. This mode allows you to select a MIDI channel and send any program change. The bottom highlighted buttons allow you to change MIDI channels, move forward or backwards through programs, send the program or cancel sending a program. Programs can be selected by using the alpha wheel, entering the program number on the keypad followed by pressing the enter button or using the decrement increment buttons. MIDI channels may be selected using the channel down and up soft buttons 
or using the channel bank buttons. This can be very helpful when using the K2000 as a master MIDI controller. Now, press the cancel soft button or exit to exit this page. To the right of the program change button is reset channel button, used to restore any MIDI channel assignments or edit you made in the channel pages back to their original factory state. This is a global command and will reset all channels. This is handy when you're finished mixing one sequence and you want to set up another sequence's channel data as opposed to going through all 16 channels and manually resetting all the parameters back to their normal defaults. Once again we see to the far right the panic or all notes off command button for silencing stuck notes. A lot of thought went into organizing all the MIDI parameters in this configuration to make your MIDI life a little easier and to save you some time. Now moving right along we'll look at the master parameters. Press the master button. Then press the performance button. And notice the top highlighted bar indicates performance parameters. At the bottom of the display are from left to right two buttons, one marked performance and the second preferences, and three sysx dump buttons marked dump master parameters, dump programs, and dump all. Look carefully at the display. This page allows you to adjust a set of global parameters and thus override the program parameters. The global parameters include pitch band range, setting the K2000 in mono mode, making the instrument a monophonic synth, turning on and setting a portamento rate, and selecting or creating an intonation table. Next, press the preference button, and you can now set the master tuning, transposition, and set the drum channel. The drum channel is the only MIDI channel that can have 32 layers in one program. You can set the master velocity and pressure maps, select the output assignments, adjust the display contrast, and shut off the confirmation messages asking you, are you sure? Hi, my name is Joe Irardi and I'm a software engineer here at Kurzweil, or Young Chang Research and Development, as we're now known. And uh, I'm here to talk to you about the drums in the K2000. Uh, the drums in the K2000 are all new samples that we've done. Uh, they were digitally recorded, they're in 16-bit format, and they're full bandwidth, and uh, they're quite good. Uh, we recorded some of the ambient ones in, uh, in a castle in Long Island, uh, so we got uh, some real ambient room sounds, some really natural-sounding room sounds that are, uh, that are quite unique, I think. Um, and in addition to them sounding very great, you have quite a bit of control over them uh, with, the, with the 2000. Uh, we have some existing drum maps already built into the unit, in fact, there are quite a few of them, and they match up the kicks and snares and the toms very nicely. Uh, these are all ready to play. You can play them as one-layer programs, uh, and there's quite a number of them, as I said, to select. There's also a MIDI standard uh, drum map that you can select that conforms to the general MIDI standard layout, and it should work with uh, uh, com competitions equipment and uh, any sequences that you already have set up for a map like that. But the really great thing about the K2000 uh, is the uh, control that the user has over the drum. And uh, you can uh, really lay out any, any selection of drums that you want and, uh, and EQ each one of them separately. You can uh, process them as separate drums, give them their own envelopes, their own EQ, uh, their own tuning, um, and their own position on the keyboard. And uh, it's a very powerful feature. You can really radically change some, uh, some of the drums that are in here. And as an example, I'll just play uh, this ambient kit here, which has sort of these drier toms. Uh, and here's a program that I did that, uh, that shows you just how radically different uh, you can change the drum sounds. Uh, and uh, this 
program was done as i think fifteen different layers of drums and of course are not all layers or splits and you can choose up to thirty two different drums across the keyboard and you can layer some of them you could layer a couple snares on top of each other and and really you have an immense amount of control over the amplitude on volumes of each one each one can have its own on volume its own equalization or filtering or any of the other effects that are available in the k two thousand once you set up one of these drum programs you can use it as a template and you can substitute in different drums and and quickly audition a number of different drum sounds using the same equalizations in the same program you've already set up so if we start with this kick here we can substitute another kick or an ambient kick or a more ambient kick and then you could move to the snare on the very same program So you can hear how the same uh, compression and EQ that I gave to one snare uh, works pretty well on the other snares as well. Uh, I think this is an extremely important part of the instrument uh, and a very powerful one. Uh, it does have one restriction. Drum mode uh, is restricted to one channel only. And uh, that is to say that the programs that you create that have um, more than three layers uh, are restricted to being on one channel. Uh, you can select that channel and it can be whatever you like. Uh, of course you can play other drum sounds, the one layer drum maps that we already have in there, on any channel. Um, but if you really want to get in and use the power that's in the K2000 uh, to really make these drums come to life, um, drum mode is, is what you want to use. And I really think it's uh, significantly more powerful than any drum machine on the market right now or any synthesizer. And uh, it's just part of the uh, reason the K2000 is a really great instrument. The next three buttons allow you to send various system exclusive messages including the master parameter settings, programs, or dump all which dumps the entire user memory. The last button to the right is the hard reset button which initializes the instrument and clears all user created programs, setups, quick access banks, etc. and restores the K2000 to its original factory specifications. If for some reason you want to do a soft reset which will not harm user created programs or setups, press the minus plus button plus the zero button and the clear button all simultaneously. You'll see the display go blank temporarily and then return to the previous page you were on when you soft reset your instrument. The last and perhaps the most important feature is the amount of support we're receiving from the best independent developers in the industry. You can expect a lot from the K2000. Power, versatility, and a lifetime of exploration. Kurzweil is currently working hard on the optional sampling board, which will feature quarter-inch stereo input, as well as popular digital formats, including AES-EBU, SPDIF, and optical connectors for communication with other digital media. For those of you wishing to sample or to take advantage of other third-party K2000 libraries, you will need to install SIMS memory modules inside your K2000. These are available in 1 megabyte, 4 megabyte, and 16 megabyte memory capacities. Now you can purchase any of these SIMS modules at a Macintosh store, at large music stores, or through mail order at a very low cost. We're also working on an optional ROM upgrade, which will increase the memory of the K2000 from 8 megabytes to 16 megabytes of ROM. Foot pedals and connectors can be purchased as an option through your local Kurzweil authorized dealer. Kurzweil Soundware engineers have been busy translating all of our sample library over for the K2000. 
This includes all of the sounds originally for the K250, the 1000 series products, and many other sounds never before heard. Our soundware department currently has also been traveling all over the world recording new instrumentation for the K2000. These and other exciting options will allow you to explore the vast possibilities in the K2000. Kurzweil would like to acknowledge the following third-party developers for their hard work in developing support products for the K2000. Although we don't have time to mention them all, we would like to mention Stratus Sound, a company world-renowned for their quality of samples, as we've seen from the K250 library. Jim Miller's work is excellent. We'd also like to acknowledge Sound Sources Unlimited and INI Productions, who are currently hard at work developing sounds for the K2000. Opcode also is importing the K2000 into their celebrated editor librarian, Galaxy. One final note, please send in your warranty cards. It's important for us to have your warranty card so we can notify you of future product developments and new products associated with the K2000, such as the intermediate and advanced training videos, which will be available shortly. We hope this introductory video has been helpful in getting you started. We want you to have fun with the instrument, explore the instrument, and realize the vast potential available of this K2000 synthesizer. Above all, have fun.